Hey there Blender Heads. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Blender internal dispersion and caustic effects using an official Blender 2.5 release and as I said the internal renderer. If you don't know what dispersion and caustics are then have a look at this video. I've also uploaded it separately so that you can watch it in higher quality. Dispersion is when light of different wavelength gets uh, refracted differently by a material. So that's why the white light gets split up and you see all those rainbow colors through the monkey. And caustics are those light patterns you can see on the ground. Both of these effects are not natively supported by Blender, so I had to use some tricks to render them. They are not physically accurate, but the point is I just wanted to prove that it's possible to some extent. I will guide you now through the blend file and explaining the basic ideas. You could say this video is an unofficial new episode of my Blender experiment series. I've decided to not continue the series, at least not under this name, because I figured the name just doesn't say enough about its content and so I guess it, that's why it's not that popular. Anyway, uh, the blend file will also be available on my website. Um, shortly after I've uploaded the video. If you're one of the first viewers, just wait a few minutes, it will be there soon. Okay, let's get to the point, let's get to the blend file and start with the dispersion effect. It's actually not that difficult to create a dispersion material. You only need material nodes and in this blend file I've created two different um, materials, one that uses three color samples and another one that uses five color samples. Let's first have a look at the less complex one, the one that uses three samples. This is the node setup. Um, the basic idea is that you have multiple samples which represent different wavelengths of the light. So in this case when we have three samples we have a sample for red light, for green light and for blue light and we just uh, split up our samples in those uh, three colors and then combine those colors. We only take the red channel of the first sample, uh, the green channel of the second sample and the blue channel of the third sample. And those samples are completely transparent materials which have an increasing refraction index. So this way we will split up the light in red, green and blue. Furthermore, I also have used some nodes on the specular color. Well, maybe I add another output here so that we can see what's happening. Um, so I used the normals of the object to define the specular color with a color ramp. So now when the angle you look at the object gets really uh, wide then you also go through all those rainbow colors. Okay and now up to let's go to the second material let's have a look at this. It uses five samples. It gets a little more complex. So in between the red and the green sample uh, we have a yellow sample and in between the green and the blue sample we have a cyan sample. So um, now for our new red color channel we don't just use the red channel of our red sample, um, we use the red channel which is the maximum of um, the yellow and the red sample because the yellow sample has also red colors and um, same goes for the blue sample we combine it out of the cyan and the blue sample. It gets a little more complex for the green sample because green is in every one of those three samples and we have to choose the maximum of the three of them. This material is what I used in the video. Please don't ask me how to use it with even more samples because then it gets really complicated and 
also it will take a lot of render time and I just recommend to stick to five samples yeah I think it, it looks good enough okay next step is to have a look at the caustics and maybe before I show you the plant file let's discuss the basic idea of what I did so let's say you got a light source somewhere and you also got your object which will refract the light <coughs> and a ground plane underneath which will receive the light patterns what lots of renderers do is to send out lots and lots of photon particles uh, from the light source which will then be refracted by the object and hit the ground somewhere and light up the area close to the impact. My idea was to do the whole process backwards. So what I did was to render the object from the other side so I had lots of rays coming through from the other side. Of course they also get refracted by the object and I get some outgoing rays and I will um, look at the angle between the outgoing ray and the angle um, the direction of the light source. This is very similar to uh, doing specular intensity calculations. Anyway, so what I get now is an image which contains my caustic intensities which I will then project onto um, my ground plane in the next step. So let's have a look at the blend file to see how I implemented this. I've got some additional scenes in the blend file used for um, pre-calculating the caustics. So this is one of them. As I said I render the object, the refracting object, from the opposite direction and this sphere represents my light source in the scene. Uh, the monkey itself has a transparent material without all this dispersion stuff. <coughs> it refracts the light and doesn't have uh, specular intensity or anything else. Uh, okay, so the light source is this sphere and it has a special material let's look at the notes it its color and its uh, brightness depends on the normal so when you go to the edge of the sphere it gets darker and darker and it also travels through these uh, rainbow colors to achieve the dispersion effect so this is where you get this angular dependency I was talking about okay uh, back to blender and back to 3d view okay now when I render it I get this image and then I can use it to project it onto the ground if I go to the main scene again <coughs> we'll see all those spot lamps underneath the ground which have the texture of the pre-rendered caustics and project them on the ground. Of course the ground has to be translucent to receive light from the other side. Okay, and as you can see here I have five of the spot lamps. I have also five of this um, caustic pre-rendering scenes. This is because, well let's go back to the paint scene. <coughs> For one point of the ground, um, this one point isn't only affected by a ray coming from this direction. Actually, the rays can come from all direction and all directions, and they all have a little a little influence on the caustic intensity. So, the more samples you make, uh, the better. So, what I did was to make five samples, and I think five samples are still not not enough to get very uh, physically accurate uh, there have to be much much more and in hindsight I would also have made them a little closer to each other uh, if you look at the video you get um, 
well let's see yeah you get those really separated maximas here which uh, uh, don't overlap each other they should be closer to each other or at least have some more samples in between that would be better anyway I only did this one render it took already a long time I just wanted to prove that it's possible and I don't have the patience to tweak a lot uh, around them okay uh, well yeah I guess that's it all I have left here is an, an another scene which just is there to um, render all the caustics at once if you want to render the caustics just uh, render this screen all the 300 images and then you're ready to go for the main scene okay and well I guess we're at the end of this video uh, thanks for watching if you experiment with this technique and get interesting results uh, please let me know I'm very interested in that uh, hope you've learned a lot I hope you see that nothing is really impossible some things are just very complex to set up like the caustic stuff and, uh, and so on <coughs> well see ya and have fun blending